please get less purple as I rub you. What is up guys? I'm your least favorite ginger and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing what I do in every video, which is doing my makeup and talking way too much. But before I get started, I would really appreciate it if you like this video and subscribe to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a halo eye using my Natasha Denona bronze palette. So I'm priming my eye once again with my Anastasia Beverly Hills eye primer. But this Natasha Denona bronze palette has just been really speaking to me lately. It's fall. I want to do something warm. I haven't done a halo eye in a while. Especially the kind of halo eye that I kind of want to do. I don't normally use black eyeshadow unless it's to run along my waterline. But I think I'm going to try it today. My skin's also been very dry lately, and I don't really know why, considering it hasn't quite cooled down where I'm at yet. But I did use Tarte Shape Tape to conceal, and that's a very drying concealer. I'm thinking about once I'm done, like, using some of the Tarte Shape Tapes that I have, I'm gonna try maybe the NARS Radiant Concealer, just because it's creamy. But I feel like I have to powder my under eyes anyway because if I don't powder, I have creases, like really deep creases, it'll settle in there. And it'll just look like I have splotches underneath my eye, which I hate. But then if I do powder, sometimes my under eyes look really dry, especially with the Tarte Shape Tape. So I'm hoping that using a more creamy concealer and adding a little bit more moisture will help. So that is down, so I'm going to take my brush, and I think I'm going to start with the black. Then I'm going to go in with the transition shade to help blend. Should I use the transition shade just to lay down color? That way the black doesn't stick as much. That's what I'll do. So I'm going to go in with beach. I'm going to press that right into this inner corner. And that is a lot darker than what it looks like in the pan. But that's fine. That's actually the color that I was wanting to use. So I'm happy I didn't go in with another one of the deeper transition shades. So I'm just laying that in. And I'm blending it into the middle and up a little bit. But I want all the concentration to be right here. I used to love to do halo eyes or spotlight eyes, whatever you want to call it. But then I really got into cut creases and I would lay down color too harshly for it to look good with halo eyes. So I'm trying my hardest to keep a light hand on the outer corner. Just I'm just forming that little O shape around my eye. And I just kind of swipe the pigment out. And then on my outer corner, I'm going to take an actual blending brush and just sweep it out. So that is just a nice flush of color, starting there, starting there, and leaving a blank spot on the middle. Yeah. I think these shades are doing a wonderful job at really helping me build the mattes, when I hear Natasha Denona, I think pigment. So I was debating on using my Little Ray of Sunshine palette by ColourPop because it's very warm. I was debating on doing more of like a yellow look as opposed to a bronze look, but I am really happy with how easily these are able to be built. So in what I'm going to assume I keep as my cold open today. I was using the Hourglass Cosmetics, the Mineral Veil Primer. I got a little sample of it from Sephora and it turned me purple. Maybe I used too much. I used what was in the sample packet, but I don't think that there's any SPF in it, unless it's mineral SPF, maybe Mineral Veil. But that was interesting. 
But like I said, I've been a little bit more dry. So I was hoping that that more hydrating primer would help. And it did. I feel like my skin looked really good once I put foundation on. Because the more I rubbed, the pink purple didn't go away or dissipate at all. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna have a fun time today. It doesn't seem to have impeded the look of my foundation, so can't be too mad at it. I really like that beach shade. Kylie Cosmetics had a shade that I also think is called beach. That's in their nine pan burgundy palette. And that is like my perfect transition shade. And I never thought that I would find it again because there was just, there's something about the yellow undertone of that shade that I just never thought I could find in any other neutral palette that I've tried. But I think this beach shade is really similar to that beach shade. So next I'm gonna go in with the black shade in this palette named Deep Dive. And I'm kind of scared because again, I don't use blacks unless it's along my waterline. Kind of blending it up into the crease, a little bit more out, but I'm really just keeping it right there. The more I play with it, the more this seems to be more of a gray than a black, which I appreciate. It definitely gives it more blendability. Now I'm just blending it out without picking up any additional product on my brush. That outer corner seems to have blended out really well. Also, yes, my children are with me. We have Splice and Maxine. They are really irritated that mommy is interrupting nap time. There is a little bit of fallout. I don't bake anymore. I don't put any powder down here to try and catch just because it makes this area too dry on me. I'm gonna bring this charcoal shade a little more in. I've been watching a lot of a creator named Smoky Glows videos. I just really like her commentary. I feel like I get her. Like I get what she's saying. And I don't know, I just appreciate her honesty as a content creator. That is a lot. What did I do? Okay. But she does have a series called Talktorial Tuesdays. And I really like that. I really like that name. That's what I'm gonna name this video. This video's name is inspired by Smoky Glow. And I will say that at the top of every single one, of, or I'll say that at the beginning of every single one of these videos from now on. I just thought of it. Talktorial Tuesdays, because that's what I do. I sit and talk for an hour. Okay, so I went in with way too much of this brown, of this charcoal shade. Now here's the thing, neither side looks bad. It's just this one is way more intense. I'm going, gonna go in with a little bit of beach. Okay, there we go. I've watched a couple of Smoky Glow's Gabby Hanna videos. I used to love Gabby Hanna. The Gabby show was like, she was my person on Vine. I just liked her camp counselor content, her like edgy girl talking to her mom. That was just a real fun time for me. But my God, I don't understand how someone can put themselves out on the internet and not be able to like say they can take creative criticism, but only if it's creative criticism that is nice or like a slew of nice things and one like bad thing. Con I say, I said creative criticism, constructive criticism. Constructive criticism doesn't have to be like packaged in a bow in order for it to be good criticism. Like it doesn't have to be said in the nicest way. It doesn't have to be said in the meanest way either. 
But not everything is an attack, especially when people just want what's best for you. Because if you look at her channel, her channel has kind of been dying. And she doesn't understand why, seemingly. Like, she always complains that she isn't on the trending page anymore. It's like, that's not the way to do it. Listen to what people are telling you. I unfollowed her or unsubscribed from her on YouTube a while ago. I think after the Kenza Cosmetic Brushes thing in 2018. That whole mess. Because she doesn't assume responsibility. And the Kenza Cosmetic uh, Brushes scam, it was a website where she promoted and she's like, hey, Here's this, web, here's this website, swipe up, and swipe up links, if you don't know, they get a percentage of revenue from people that either swipe up or swipe up and purchase. It's either traffic or traffic with the purchase. And it was like, yeah, all these brushes, they're having like an end of year clearance sale. So there are these $80 brushes, but you just have to pay $10 shipping. They're not $80 brushes. They are $10 brushes or less that you just pay for shipping for. But she also didn't disclose that that was an ad, which FTC guidelines, obviously you're supposed to. She didn't disclose that the link was an affiliate link. And then whenever people called her out on that, because that's very predatory, honestly, because she has a young fan base or she has a fan base of hers that they were young when they started following her. So if they were like 13, 14, now they're 18, 19. I don't know. It's just predatory to not disclose and not say, hey. And I mean, Tana Mojo, I think, did it too. But this isn't about Tana Mojo. Tana Mojo's in like some stuff for everything else that she does in life. Smoky Glow did a great uh, explanation of why Gabby Hanna's kind of fallen off. Like, she did a Genius interview, which Genius, if you don't know, if you make a song, Genius is like a company that like, it, they do an interview with you and they like explain the lyrics and they'll have that down at Spotify for some of the songs. And they had her sing a little bit of it and she blew out a mic whenever she hit like a high note. What if I'm the monster that's been here all along? And so it went to a secondary mic. So it sounded not awful, but very jarring. It was like loud and it was awful. It was awful. And um, yeah, but she was like, no, you're being bullies and yada yada. And I get that she ta she doesn't want to be known as Gabby Hanna, the YouTuber. She wants to be Gabby Hanna, the artist. But she relies on YouTube drama to drum up views, which a lot of people do, yes. But you can't use that system and exploit that system and then get mad when other people, you know, the people that make drama, you know, videos, also get views. And like, you can't have your cake and eat it too. I don't quite know what shade I want to be in the middle because I want to shimmer. I don't want it to just be matte. I'm going in with palladium. I can't not pronounce it that way. Palladium. But I don't know, when she just calls everyone online bullies and then she made merch for it, like calling people bullies, but she spelt it a weird way. And it's like, girl, just, just stop. Just stop. You're not winning any of these battles. You're not doing anything to further your career, hence why your views are down. And as like a former fan, it kind of is like embarrassing for me to say that I want supported you. I just want good things from her and for her, but she seems incapable of wanting them for herself. But back to Smoky Glow, she just seems like a genuinely nice person. She's in school like me, and she just seems to really have a drive. And her makeup's really good too. Like, aside from like personality, if people are just like, no, I just want content, I don't really care. She does really good makeup. She has a really good drive. She posts, I think, two videos a week. Pretty consistency. Pretty consistently, like I said, she has the Talktorial Tuesday, 
series and then I think she uploads on Saturdays. The days are kind of all running together at this point for me. But I just think that she's a genuine creator and I really enjoy her content. That is really pretty, but I kind of do want it to be more gold. I can never be satisfied. Like me, as a woman who has never been satisfied. So I'm gonna go in with a little bit of true bronze. And just put that right in the middle. I've just really fallen in love with this palette. I love the sh foils, I love the shimmers. I clearly love the mattes. I'm blown away by how well this smoky eye look looks. Whenever I reach either 50 or 100 subscribers, I'm gonna do a giveaway. I might give away this palette since I've been using it so much and I just really stand by the quality of it. Now what I see some people do for Halo Eyes is they'll go in and they'll do like the exact same process down here, with like the black, the lighter, the shimmer, yeah. It always looked slightly off on me, but I think I'm gonna try it one more time. I'm honestly scared of putting a shimmer on like my eye creases, but see how it goes. Can you even tell a difference? After what feels like hours of blending and reblending, well, yeah, kind of. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, kind of. So what I did is I didn't pick up any additional product on the first blending brush that I used because it had that that charcoal on it. So I grabbed this one that had a little bit of beach on it and used that to blend it out and kind of come more into the center, but not all the way, all while swiping off any powder that falls onto my face. Yeah, you can definitely tell that it's rubbed off some product, this brush. Uh-huh. Yeah, this area of my face looks rough for me brushing away all the product so much. It's fine. And then I'm just tucking in a little bit of palladium and bronze. So I'm gonna try and do something like funky yet cool with my eyeliner, which is I'm gonna try and mirror the halo effect with a brown liner and then a gold liner in the center. So we'll see how that goes. I think that worked. I don't know how much of that I'll keep in because it felt like it took forever. But yeah, so I went in with the matte brown liner first on the outer corner and then I did the middle up with the gold and then I kind of blended the brown liners out again with it. We'll see how that looks like with mascara after I get done with the other side. Did I just break this? How did I just break this? How did I just break this? No. What do I do? This was like $8 ColourPop. You can't do this to me. Oh my God, it's broken. No matter what, I, no matter which way I turn it, it makes that clicking No, How? How did I do this? You know what I really hate about filming uh, little breaks in between? Is that I'll be kind of thinking of like what I want to say or just thinking in general. And just the weirdest stuff will pop into my head. For instance, that Carol Baskin song. Killed her, husband, whacked him. That's playing on repeat right now. Rent free. Also, I'm using Eben New York lashes and those bands are really stiff. So I like to put the lash glue on my eye because the bands don't really like to move. If I fix one side, the other side will lift, but they're really pretty. And this is just a way that I have figured out to get them to work. I don't know how I feel about these lashes, but we will carry on. I forgot to do an inner corner highlight, so I'm gonna take a little bit of silk. All right, for cheeks, I'm gonna take my Kylie Face palette. I'm going in with the shade Toasty on my Morphe G1 brush for my bronzer. For blush, I went in with Batty on the block. And for highlight, I'm going in with Cheers Darling. 
For my lips, I'm gonna go in with Morphe Peanut and NYX Ruffle Trim Liquid Lipsticks. All right, guys, that is it. I really, really love this Natasha Denona palette, but this is my Spotlight Halo Smoky Eye Glam Tutorial. Yeah, let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll be back next week with a whole new video. Bye!